Well, what's going on in the world of wrestling? Oh boy, it's another exciting day and another exciting week in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start with the thing that a lot of people seem to be obsessed with. It came out yesterday, Jim, due to a Freedom of Information public request or public records request that was filed that All In in London had 72,265 people go through the turnstile. That is something that the British government, I guess, keeps track of. So Tony Khan, because he's been so behind the 81,035 number and very forceful in pushing it, a lot of people are using this information as a way to kind of, it seems like they just want to embarrass Tony with it, actually. Well, and I'm not going to be as hard on Tony and, and his friends as people would think, but first, let me explain the turnstile count, and it's also called the drop count, and that comes from back in the old days, back in the black and white days, right? If you attended an event at an arena of any kind, basketball game or circus or whatever the thing was in an arena, some arenas back in the old days didn't have the turnstile gimmick, and then when the turnstiles came in, they were just turnstiles. They were some of them weren't hooked up to anything. They were just a way to, to funnel the people in without them fucking stampeding. But the turnstile count, it was the same as the drop count because in the old days, I don't know, Brian, if you're even old enough. I mean, I'm sure you've been to clubs or whatever where they tear the tickets manually. But at arenas, that's how it started out. You had ticket sellers at the window that sold you the ticket, and you had ticket takers at the door that when you went to the door to go in the arena, you handed them your ticket, they tore it in half, they gave you back the, the ticket stub, which indicates that you have your seat and blah, 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 and they would drop the other half into the fucking bucket or slot or whatever that they had at the door. And then the promoters and the arena manager later on they would do the checkup, and if there was any discrepancy, if the promoter said, God damn it, you're screwing me, I should have more than this, or something's wrong, they would actually take the fucking ticket stubs out and do a goddamn manual count, which was, you know, problematic. But this was all the days before computers. So drop count became turnstile count, when all these, especially big buildings, got wired up to where every time that turnstile turns, it registers. And there used to be a deal in the wrestling business when the promoter thought that somebody might be double dipping. We've explained on the show here in the past before how that if the building was responsible for either selling the tickets and taking the tickets, building personnel, two people working together, could double sell the tickets and pocket the money. You sell a ticket at the ticket booth, it gets torn, but instead of the fucking a general admission ticket, instead of the stub going in the bucket, it goes back around and they fucking sell it again. Or they don't tear it, in other words. They just take the fucking ticket. It's a general admission, go on in, send it around, and sell it again. So they, the promoters used to have a hand clicker every and they would put some stooge near the door and that stooge near the door would have a hand clicker in his hand. And every time somebody walked through, he'd click it again and it would register. And if there was 1200 people in the building paid, said that there was only 972 or whatever, then there was chaos to be had. But there is always discrepancies in the number of tickets sold and the turnstile count or the drop count because depending on the size of the event you've always got people that well we got tickets but we couldn't get a babysitter we got tickets but the kids got sick or we got tickets but we had a chance to get laid i know that doesn't happen often with the AEW audience so it's entirely feasible that in any event AEW or not there will be some 
no-shows of ticket purchasing patrons so that you can't have more people in than people had bought tickets or got comps, but you can have fewer people in than bought tickets or got comps. See, because everybody gets a comp doesn't go. Radio station giveaway, well, they didn't, they didn't have any money in it. What the fuck? It's too far to drive. Blah, blah, blah. So, now the problem becomes that not only was it 10% of the fucking announced house, almost 10,000 people difference, or 9,000 people difference, but I saw somebody, it may have been Thurston Howell over at WrestleNomics, said that if the, that generally from an inside source, they're hearing that there are up to 20% of the people that purchase tickets don't actually fucking go, or the 20% of the tickets that are sold don't actually show up to a lot of the house shows and events. And that's a really large percentage. Yeah. And that wouldn't be happening with any other company. And I've said this before, I'm not even accusing Tony of saying, oh, I got to buy 10,000 tickets. I've said that this is a crowdfunding thing. The most devoted, desperate for AEW to succeed fans will buy, they bought all in tickets. They bought, they buy whatever. Even if they can't fucking go, they figure it's supporting, it's a GoFundMe for their goddamn favorite wrestling promotion. And I think their priorities might be better serve putting a new roof on their house or whatever than buying a ticket to a show that they're not going to go to. But there's really no other way to explain that because the biggest event of all, I believe with the 81,000, because they said these are the number of tickets that were sold. That is always more than the actual drop count. But in this case, it's a disturbing percentage of people for the biggest show ever. And they still didn't sell out Wembley Stadium because that would have been 90,000 people. So it's not like, you know, they, they lied to, to WrestleMania level standards where they say more than the place would even hold is two different statistics. But when Tony came out afterwards and said, oh, I, I bet there was 90,000 in the building. By the time you added all of the people and the, you know, I guess the roster and the goddamn workers and whatever, because I think he really thought there were 81,000 people that bought tickets in the building. And then they found out, well, shit, you know, there weren't. Is that what we should believe that Tony was told when he said, what's the house that this is how many people bought the ticket. So he went out there and just ran with that. Yes. Because, well, see, here's because for the him thing. to say that there were at least 90,000 people there, that means he thought all of those people were there. And if he had any idea of the turnstile count, that means Tony lied about it. Well, but here's the thing, Brian, I have been around promoters and promoting myself for 40 years. And unless there was an argument amongst the promoter and the building management as to the money that one side was getting and the other side was given or whatever, I've never heard of a promoter asking for the turnstile count. They always, okay. how many tickets did we sell? That's important. So they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have come up to that. Well, Tony, we sold 81,000 tickets, but goddamn, the big news is on the turnstile count, nobody would, they, that's why this hasn't come up until now, because since it was a bone of contention with people wanting to disprove it, they filed the Freedom of Information Act. But every building has a turnstile count. It's just if the building is a private enterprise, there's no reason for you to, or no way for you to get it unless they want to give it to you. But since apparently I would imagine Wembley Stadium and this historic venue is owned by the government or in some way administered by the government that you can do that. I don't know if you can just go down to the goddamn Yum Center in Louisville or whatever and say, hey, give me the turnstile count for X, Y, and Z, but I know they've got it. 
I think part of the issue is, and why I think, and it's somewhat unfair, I think, Tony's getting hit with this so hard. I look at Tony, look at what he said. Look at I mean, Will Ospreay got a fucking tattoo of it, of the number on his arm. <laughs> it was a big deal. It's his hometown. He could just put tickets sold underneath <laughs> it. I guess so. But I think part of the issue is because we always hear about this with WWE. And it goes back to the whole idea, what was the attendance for WrestleMania 3? Every year they do WrestleMania. Vince will announce 100,000 people. Maybe they sold, and again, I'm just throwing a number out there. I don't have anything from me. 89,000 tickets. And you're always like, how do you reconcile the number in between? That's, I think, what it is. I think people are trying to shove it in Tony's face just because they always hear about it with WWE. Well, and that's a, I mean, promoters, especially in wrestling, but promoters of anything have always exaggerated numbers or tried to in publicity, except as we've talked about here on the show, when it would have cost them money, when there was, you know, an athletic commission uh, supervising and collecting tax on a certain amount of money at the gate or whatever, the promoters didn't want the newspaper to say, oh, well, we made $50,000 more than we fucking said we did or whatever. But the question in the wrestling business used to be, the first thing when the guys walked in, the, in any territory, in, any lo in every locker room, when they came in, if unless they were just the the preliminary guys that were happy to be there, you would find the local promoter, whoever was handling the the town for the company, and say, "What's the advance? How's the advance? Is it any good?" And usually they might ace, "Oh, we got a good advance or whatever." They might actually tell you, "Yeah, we got ten grand or whatever." But it was some indication of of the night to come, and then. If you were in a feature match and you gave a shit about your business, which is why I've I've got all of this, all these records in my books for these houses, you would ask what was the house because that's what you were getting paid on. And they would say, again, it was not in the promoter's best interest to tell you we did a hundred thousand dollars when only did eighty because then you were expecting you'd be paid on a hundred grand. And every once in a while, you know. If it was a big show, they'd round up a little bit to make it sound grand. That's why if you see any old Athletic Commission stuff, that's the bare minimum amount of people that were there. Yeah. and But but anyway, the thing is, they didn't tell you in number of fans that were in the building, they told you what the money was. Because if the wrestlers didn't care if five people paid $1,000 each, it was a $5,000 house, right? Or 5,000 people paid a dollar. That had been easier to work in front of. But the money was the same thing. So in most cases, in my old records, we have extrapolated the number of people based on the average ticket prices at the time, and all buildings are different. So they're estimates unless we have the, the counts. But in, in all that time, nobody ever said, again, unless there was a dispute, how many people are actually in the building on the people who bought those tickets? Well, God damn, we don't care. They bought the fucking tickets. But you could tell by the most people, it was a tiny percentage, uh, you know, in a 5,000 seat building. Maybe there might have been 100 or 150 or 200 or whatever, if that many, that for various reasons had got a ticket but couldn't get there. And we've all had that thing. You know, I missed my chance to see Roller Derby live. Here in Louisville, because I got sick and I had a fever. My mom wouldn't take me. We had tickets. So that happened, but not thousands of people. Especially if you're not getting a physical ticket, so it's not even like you have something to collect out of this. Yeah, so I think some people took it as a GoFundMe. We, we just want to we want to get the ticket. We want to know we were there. I don't think Tony's nefariously buying you know, 10,000 tickets, but at the same time, I think he was genuinely amped up by everybody patting him on the head that there were 90,000 people in that place, and you wouldn't have another 10,000 almost people with the goddamn employees and the roster and the parking attendants and everybody else. So we're not shitting all over it. It's entirely believable. There are several different metrics did they, how many did they sell? How many comps were out? 
how many did actually showed up, whether they paid or got comp tickets. Those are all always different numbers. How many were bought from a Swiss bank account? Now that may be a different number yet. But here's the thing, you goddamn it. I don't think if Tony was going to buy the tickets and artificially inflate the attendance, I don't think he would have done it in Wembley. I think he'd have done it in Cincinnati, where they had barely over 2,000 people in a fucking what looked like an NBA arena, and not only the television program, but the fucking pictures I saw on Twitter of the vast... I mean, it looked like Star Trek could be exploring it for five years. Um, it, it, so you would think that if he was going to buy his own tickets, he'd buy 2,000 tickets and send somebody with a couple of buses to the goddamn children's homes or... Do they still have homes for unwed mothers? Why buses? Or, He's rich. Helicopters. Just drop them out of a helicopter. Well, no, you need you, that would be a lot, a lot of fucking helicopters. You can get fucking 60, 80 people on a fucking bus. So take it down to <laughs> what? take it over to fucking Newport. Bus them over to fucking Cincy. Or I'm saying if you're gonna buy your own tickets, buy them for the goddamn shows that look like piss holes in a snowbank instead of in Wembley. <laughs> 